Good morning, everyone. Today is our Friday Feeds devotion or something we trust God will use to feed our souls as we reflect and meditate upon it. I want to tell you about a college lecturer I have who always starts our lectures with a devotional. And a number of times for the devotion, he's spoken from the book of Psalms. And in almost every one of these times, he's told us the exact same story. And as he starts to tell the story, he says, I think I've actually told you this story before, which he has. And then he says, actually, yes, I, I definitely have told you this story, but I'm going to tell it again and I make no apology for that. And he tells a story of a student who he once taught in the Old Testament lecture series, looking through the book of Psalms. And in particular, they were looking at the Psalms of Lament. And this student found these very difficult. Psalms where the author is raising his concern and heartbreak and perhaps even complaint before God. Questioning God. And the lecturer says that this student said, I, I, I could never pray this way. My theology won't let me pray like that. And for all the times I've heard that story, I like it because it resonates with me and I think with many others. I think we might wonder, how is it that the psalmist can speak this way to God? I mean, can we really come before him and complain or, or, or with the confusion and the hurt that we feel and let him know that? It makes me think of a number of different verses. One of them in Romans chapter 9 says, who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Now that is speaking about something in a particular context. It's basically saying, how is it though that we can come to God and question him? I mean, surely we love God, we honour and respect him, we desire to glorify him. We know he's all wise, we know he's all powerful, he's always acting for our good. So how could we come in this sense of lament, disappointment of hurt? There are a number of Psalms where we read that. I was thinking also though of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 20 is a very interesting chapter and it'd be worth you reading the whole thing through. Here there were just a couple of the verses of Jeremiah's complaint. In verse 7 he says, You deceived me, Lord, and I was deceived. You overpowered me and prevailed. I am ridiculed all day long. Everyone mocks me. And then he goes on in verse 18 and he says, why did I come out from the womb to see toil and sorrow and spend my days in shame? You get a very clear sense of exactly how it is that Jeremiah is feeling. I mean, it's honest and it is raw. I wonder how that sits with you. That you would also come before God and speak this way. I think it's really interesting because this is Jeremiah. This is the same prophet who spoke the great vision of glory and of grace of the new covenant. It's the same Jeremiah who speaks in that wonderful verse in Jeremiah 29 11 of the good plans that God has for us to prosper and not to harm us. Jeremiah knows God. He knows what he is like. He knows he is gracious and kind and compassionate and good. And yet he still comes before him in chapter 20 and speaks as he does. If you look back at those verses, he feels deceived, betrayed, abandoned. He even grieves the day that he was born. He feels weak broken. You know, I think it's really important to recognise that God is not put off by David or the other psalmist's lament. With David, he can still call him a man after his own heart, even when David shares and lays his heart out before God as he so often does. God can even take Jeremiah's struggles as he does and still reveal things to him, still use him and love him and draw him to himself as he does. And if he can do that with David and if he can do that with Jeremiah, then he can surely do that with you too. I think what we need to understand is this. God gives us the freedom to come to him just as we are. 
I mean, God knows how you are feeling, right? You know you can't hide anything from him. So if you do not pour out your heart to him, if you do not tell him how you are feeling, he knows it anyway. We can actually come and lay out all our feelings unfiltered and unfettered before God. And another thing that's really important for us to understand is if we do not do this before God, then we will take them somewhere else. The pain, the hurt, the confusion, the doubt, the uncertainty, the pain that we feel, we will take them somewhere else. And what we might do is we might just seek to bury them. We might distract ourselves with other things as a way to keep how we're really feeling locked up. How we distract ourselves might or might not be sinful, but what it is most likely to do is to take us away from God. If we're not coming honestly before God, then that's going to create a distance. We're going to drift from him and it might just be a gradual decline. But if we're not being honest before him, then we'll close ourselves off a little from him. And might lead us to become a little melancholy, a little bit apathetic, but it will most certainly affect our relationship with him. Sometimes how we feel if it's anger and hurt and confusion, if we don't take it to God, then we will take it out on other people and they are the ones who bear the brunt of our anguish, hurt, confusion. We've got to understand this. God is the only one who is big enough, with shoulders broad enough, to take what we are feeling. He's the God of the whole universe. He knows everyone so very intimately. He holds this whole world in his hands. He sustains you and he sustains this world. He totally understands you. He knows everything about you. He's the only one who will never leave us or forsake us. He will never abandon us in our pain, sorrow, hurt, confusion or disappointment. Know that. Understand that. And then come to him. Speak to him. Maybe you're not in a position of lament right now. And if that's the case, praise God. But then please pray for those who may be. Whether you know they are or not. Pray for brothers and sisters who are struggling. Brothers and sisters who need the intimacy of God, his love and his comfort. The assurance of his presence with him. And to remind themselves again of the promises of salvation that he makes to them. But if you are in a position right now where your heart is heavy, you're weighed down and struggling, if you're feeling pain or confusion or disappointment, then come to God and do not leave his presence. Don't go elsewhere or to anyone else. Go to God and go today. Lay your heart before him. And keep coming to him. Trust that he will deal with you as a father deals with a child. Trust that he might change your heart and draw you back to himself again. And that you might delight in him again. As he invites you to do. God knows you. He knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And he loves you still. He can handle whatever it is you you throw at him. But as you do that, you come and you come and come again in order that you might have your heart changed and draw near to him. That you will once again love him with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. That you will delight in him as he also delights in you. What a kind invitation he gives to us to come. And so let us not throw that away. Let us not hide ourselves from God. But even if it means physically going down on your knees, throwing your arms wide, saying, oh God, please help me today. He invites you and welcomes you to do that. Pour out your heart to him. Be honest with him. Tell him how you are feeling. And be sure of the Father's love towards you. Lord, my prayer is simple. I want to thank you that you love us, that you invite us to come to you and you accept us as we are. And Lord, if we continue to come to you and lay our hearts out before you, then Lord, you will draw us to yourself 
you will reveal your love and your kind promises to us and you will change our heart so that we might once again be inclined towards you. So encourage us today. Lift us, we pray today. We ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen.